Hey guys, today we're going to answer the question, how do I subtract fractions and mixed numbers when borrowing is involved? So to subtract fractions and mixed numbers, remember we need to find a common denominator and write those equivalent fractions. And then we will subtract the numerators and leave that common denominator the same. If there's mixed numbers, we can subtract the whole number parts and the fraction part separately, or we can convert the mixed number to an improper fraction and subtract those improper fractions. Sometimes when we're subtracting mixed numbers, we need to borrow. So if we have like on this one right here, I don't have anything to subtract that three fourths with, so I would need to borrow that with that six. And then like always just make sure that your answer is in simplest form. So let's go ahead and do number one. We talked about the issue here. I need to subtract three fourths, but I don't have a fraction from the six to subtract it with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the six to five and four fourths. Four over four is the same as one, so five and one makes six. So this is equivalent. And now I can subtract the four and three fourths because the three fourths can be subtracted from the four fourths. So now let's subtract the whole number separately. So five minus four is one, and then we'll subtract the fraction separately. Four fourths minus three fourths is one fourth. So six minus four and three fourths is equivalent to one and one fourth. Okay, let's look at number two. We have the same issue here. I have a fraction in the second number, but not in the first number. So let's borrow from this 12. I'm gonna change that 12 to 11 and eight eighths. The reason I did eight over eight this time is because I have three over eight here and I want to just go ahead and create those common denominators. So 11 and 8 eighths is the same thing as 12, and we're gonna subtract five and three eighths. Now I'm gonna subtract to the whole numbers. 11 minus five is six, and then I'll subtract the fractions. Eight eighths minus three eighths would be five eighths. So the answer is six and five eighths. Okay, let's look at number three. I have two and one fourth minus three fourths. So on this one, I do have a fraction here, but it is smaller than the three fourths. So I need to borrow from this two so that I don't end up with a negative fraction within the mixed number. I need this fraction to be bigger to avoid that. So I'm gonna change the two to a one and I'm gonna borrow four fourths from that two or one from the two. And I'm gonna combine it with the one fourth. So two and one fourth is the same thing as one and five fourths. And now I can subtract the three fourths from that and I get one and two fourths. And then I can just simplify this further. Two and four are both divisible by two. So this is the same as one and one half. Okay, let's look at number four. Running into another borrowing issue. I have one eighths here and three eighths here. I need to make this fraction bigger so I can subtract three eighths from it. So I'm gonna borrow from the seven. And I'm gonna turn that seven into a six and then I will add eight eighths, combine eight eighths with the one eighth. So that will become six and nine eighths minus five and three eighths. Eights. And now I just subtract the whole number separately. Six minus five is one, and the fraction separately. Nine eighths minus three eighths would be six eighths. And now I can just simplify that a little bit further because six and eight are both divisible by two. So the simplest form is one and three fourths. Okay, let's look at number five. I have 13 and one third minus two and five ninths. So the first thing that I notice is that these fractions do not have common denominators. So I'm gonna go ahead and create those common denominators. So three, six, nine, I know that nine is a multiple of three. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply this fraction by three over three. So then I get 
13 and 3 ninths minus 2 and 5 ninths. Okay, so I have common denominators, but I cannot subtract 5 from 3 without creating a negative. So I'm going to need to borrow from the 13. So the 13 is going to change to a 12, and I'm going to add 9 over 9 to that, 3 ninths. So then I get 12 and 12 ninths minus 2 and 5 ninths. And then 12 minus 2 is 10. And then 12 ninths minus 5 ninths is 7 ninths. Okay, number six, I have eight and one six minus six and eight ninths. So again, I do not have those common denominators. I'm gonna list out multiples of six and see if any of those are multiples of nine. So six, 12, 18 is a number that six and nine both go into. So let's go ahead and create those common denominators. I want a denominator of 18. So I'll multiply the one six by three over three and I'll multiply the eight ninths by two over two. And then I get eight and three eighteenths minus six and 16 eighteenths. So now I have the common denominators, but this fraction is too small to subtract 16 eighteenths from. So I'm gonna need to borrow from that eight. So that eight is going to change to a seven and I'm gonna add 18 over 18 to the 3 eighteenths. And then I get seven and 21 eighteenths minus six and 16 eighteenths. And now I can subtract this. Seven minus six is one. And then 21 eighteenths minus 16 eighteenths is five eighteenths. All right, last one, number seven. Emily has seven and one-fourths cup of flour. She is going to use one and two-thirds cup of flour to make a pizza. How many cups of flour will she have left? So she has seven and one-fourths cup, and she's going to use or take away one and two-thirds cup. So first issue I see is I do not have common denominators here but four and three can both go into 12. So I'm gonna create common denominators of 12. So I'm gonna multiply the one fourth by three over three, and I'll multiply the two thirds by four over four. And I get seven and three twelfths minus one and eight twelfths. So now I have common denominators, but I cannot subtract 8 twelfths from 3 twelfths. So I need to borrow from that 7. So that 7 is going to change to a 6, and I will add 12 over 12 to the 3 over 12. So I'll get 6 and 12 plus 3 is 15. 6 and 15 twelfths minus 1 and 8 twelfths. And now I can just subtract the like parts. 6 minus 1 is 5. 5, and then 15 minus 8 is 7. So 5 and 7 twelfths cup of flowers left. 